how much how much are you spending a month on ads? I think last month we spent about fifty five thousand dollars on ads. Fifty five thousand dollars. Yeah. Well, well okay. Look, I didn't know it was that much. Hey, pronouncers, welcome back. This is Bruce. F- uh, wait, Mike is too hot. Hey, pronouncers, welcome back to Print Uh huh. Wait. Hey, Printavo Print Hustlers. Hey, Printavo Print Hustlers. Oh, man. What do I normally even say? Hey, Print Hustlers, welcome back to the Printavo Podcast. Super excited to have you back. I'm Bruce for Printavo. We've got Mr. Stephen Farragut at Campus Inc. And we got a super special guest today, Justin Weems out of Feels So Good. I almost said Fine Southern Gentleman. He did a, a recent rebrand. They are doing a pretty hefty seven figure sum out of retail and custom screen printing. Um, pretty cool to be able to share his story and how it shifted from one side to the other. So we'll I jump on in that a second. $55,000 a month in ads? 55 Inside. G's Inside. in ads, Ben. And he said, and that was a pivotal moment. I always love giving those pivotal moments because that's where he said things changed. It's just hard advertising. All right, before we get there, we got our sponsors. Bruce, who do you got? All right. First up, Multicraft. Have you heard of Multicraft Daddy? Have you heard of Multicraft Daddy, Farrag? I, I have. I, I I might know Dave Eggers. Dave Eggers is at 421 followers. On He's doing great. He's great. I'm really proud of him. Thank you, David. Oh, 422. Just changed. If you need ink supplies or daddy, Multicraft screen printing and digital supplies for over 50 years have been providing you with top brands at competitive pricing. Make sure to mention Printavo Podcast so you can get an extra 10% off your first order. Farag, you guys order a ton for Multicraft as well. Yep. So thank you, Multicraft. Second up. Subacolor is the world's best heat transfer made by screen printers for screen printers. Rum and the team at Subacolor understand firsthand exactly the pressures and expectations of the screen printing business. Rum came from the industry, and that's why they pride themselves on being super fast and super easy. I can't tell you how many times um, Supercolor has just bailed us out. Um, they ship within a couple of days. The quality is incredible. They hit all of their colors, and they have drastically transformed our business um, experience them for yourself using promo code printable 15 and get 15% off. All right. Easy way. Easy way. You shouldn't be spending all day cleaning dirty screens. Easy ways line of environmentally conscious chemicals, get the job done faster, more efficiently, and cost you a fraction of the cost per screen. Easy way. Check them out. Buy them at your distribution or direct or whatever. They're great. And last but not least, one nine hundred hot stuff. Hot stuff. Ding. One nine hundred hot stuff dot com. Uh, if you need a solution to improve efficiency, reduce costs in your art department, call one nine hundred hot stuff dot com. Um, actually, the team at Graphic Source offers industry leading outsource options for your shop by truly becoming part of your team. Um, Lucas and good old Nick Wood and the team at Graphx are fantastic. So SEPs, mockups, creative, order management, embroidery, digitizing, back office admin, they have 30 years in the game and they know and understand shop needs and have a proven track record. Hit up graphicsource.com and mention the Printable podcast for 50% off your first vector separation or embroidery order. Thanks, guys. Without further ado, Mr. Justin Weaves. You're in a cool room. Where are you? Uh, I'm actually in our retail space. We have this little lounge area. We did a big event with um, Bose a couple months ago, and they completely changed the entire shop for like a week and left some pieces behind, and this is one of the pieces they left behind. So we just kept it and made a little lounge area out of it. Damn. Justin, what's what? what's your Instagram handle? Uh, mine is J-E-E-M-S, Jeems. And then what's the shop's? FSG prints. Wait, FSG. what was the event with Bose? It was like a pop-up um, experience or what? Uh, yeah, they just did. It was promoting the headphones. They had two pretty big bands come and play. I think they had some food vendors and alcohol sponsors and things like that. But I think it was like a 500-person event. It was free, and I think the tickets sold out within like sold out within like an hour or something like that. But did, a good time. Wow. did they like, rent the space from you or do you print yeah, for they, them or what? We rented it out. So we did print some shirts for the staff and everything. But uh, yeah, they rented the space out. They committed to buying a bunch of uh, vinyl 
uh, vinyl records for the whole thing. It was, they had all these little pods and listening stations set up. It was really cool. So what, what is like the business angle of that? Cause like some shops I see just into the community side of, you know, doing cool stuff and hosting events and others it's, would want to drive more awareness to the custom side, but obviously you've got retail now, it sounds like too. Even before we were like, even before we had a retail store or were really strongly selling online, like it's always been super important to me just to like, just for brand awareness, getting people into the shop. Even when our shop was just like a rundown warehouse, like we would still have like, we had a whole bay set up just with a stage and sound system. Like, it was very DIY, but we would have bands come and play like every weekend and just getting, I don't know, just getting people in there. People affiliated a bit with bands are going to need merch printed at some point. So I just figure if we can get that recognition, then we'll get them somewhere down the line. That's cool. Yeah, that's it's interesting. The music route. Brett does that. You see a lot. Like Eric fulfills for for a bunch of records and stuff too. Mm -hmm. But it's really cool to see see how you all do it. You guys have a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. Um, yeah. That's a pretty big feat of strength. I don't know very many shops that have that. How how did you do that? Like, uh, are they all fake? Are they Russian? Like, every everything's real. Um, <laughs> uh, the only fake followers I have is from my DJ account, which everyone's pretty much all fake. Um, no, but uh, Facebook and Instagram ads have. I mean, I would say probably this time last year we were probably sitting around. I don't know, 35 or 40,000 followers. And yeah, uh, the Facebook and Instagram ads have helped us out a lot and like trying to turn the, those people into organic customers going forward. Interesting. So do you, do you pay for ads to raise awareness about, um, I guess, feel so good or do you like, like what's your strategy there? Um, it's a little bit of everything. So we do, um, a lot of it is just pushing the retail online uh, shirts. The We do a little bit for the screen printing side of things, but we don't have to, we don't have to rely on that so much with the ads. Um, I know we, we also don't do a lot of like outbound sales. We've been staying pretty busy. Um, so we're not, we're not really hurting for like new customers per se. Um, just more focused on pushing the the retail side of it with the Facebook, Instagram ads. And then also, you know, the events, like we're, we usually have something on the shop, like once or twice a week, whether it's like a vendor pop up or um, a show. And we use uh, Facebook ads to push those out locally too. Wow. Do you, do you have an agency that helps you out or do you do them yourself? Um, a little bit of both. I started out doing it myself and then um, we linked up with an agency uh, March of last year and they just blew it out of the water. Um, but it's still really fun for me. So I have them give me my own little section in our ad space. So I go in and pull stuff. <laughs> Justin, and you get $500 a month. We'll Here's take your the rest of your tokens. <laughs> so, so wait, like how much? Okay. So you're at 35,000 followers and you blew up to 100,000 you obviously are a very cool shop. Like you're not a lame business whatsoever. So yeah, like pay. how much, how much are you spending a month on ads? Um, right. We're spending about, uh, I think last month we spent about $55,000 on ads. $55,000. Yeah. Well, well okay. Money. I didn't know it was that much. So <laughs> is that, is that like, so is it more retargeting focus to, to drive sales through some sort of quote it's, process? Or? It's a mix of everything. And it's I know you sell doing, the tickets and uh, we're doing like uh, retargeting top of funnel um, in the retail side. Yeah. Yeah. But, but you've dialed it in. I mean, spending that much must mean that it's ROI positive, right? Yeah. The return is, the return is good. We're shooting for at least a two time return at this point now, um, back before the iOS changed, it, everything was way better though. Um, we were, Oh, to be able to track you on your phone versus yeah, on Facebook. we were hitting crazy numbers before but once the iOS changed, like how to swap up some strategies and like, um, I don't know, do whatever we could kind of get creative and, uh, try new things. So like, Justin, I, I have a question. Like so say you took that $55,000 and you just turned it off next month, like just mm -hmm. straight up, like turn it off. How much do you think your sales would drop because of it? Um, I would say probably about at least by half. 
um, yeah, I would say at least half. For Is sure. the majority of that non custom work like retail uh, and the selling oh, tickets yeah. for the events? Okay. Um, yeah, most of yeah, most of that is just focused on the retail side of it. Yeah. How, how did we get here? So so like you guys, I saw went through a rebrand to um, from Fine Southern Gentleman, which I think people may have heard of or seen through you know around, to feel so good. Um, you've been working on the business since 2007, so about 15 years or so. Um, I don't know a sense of the size of the shop and everything yet, which I'll ask, but like, where, where did you start? And then how, how do we get to today? Um, so we actually started, it was me and my best friend in my hometown. We weren't screen printers at all. We were just booking shows, um, at a bar we worked at and we needed a name for our booking company. And just came up with find something, gentlemen, just as an inside joke we had. Um, and then we were responsible for like building out this bar and booking the bands and paying the sound guy. It's kind of just given to us. And so we, my uh, best friend had started just like designing shirts and we had them printed in town and we started selling find something, gentlemen merch at the shows. And that started taking off pretty well. But we, I mean, we were selling shirts like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, but we use that to put back into the bar and then, um, eventually him and I moved to Austin together, uh, like pretty soon after that and took those designs to some, uh, shops here in Austin who were kind enough to take these not so great designs at the time and put them in the shops and kind of gave us a reason to keep going once we moved to Austin. And then we would have others, uh, before that, my partner had, uh, I started screen printing in Nacogdoches. We got him a job at a shop there. And so he would go print our stuff after hours. Once we moved to Austin, we bought some equipment from a business that was going out, like going out of business. And we started printing out of my garage. I got to learn how to do it and we kind of kept pushing it from there. And what was your, what was your first piece of equipment? Yeah. First um, press. It silver was, press. what do we have? Uh, well, we have? I think a silver press is our first one. Um, and then we had like a four color Riley Hopkins that would not keep registration for anything at all. I just remember <laughs> being in the garage until like four in the morning, just dripping with sweat, trying to get this four color. Hold the screen down. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, it was. Did you have the so micro cool. registrations on the front or no? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just had like untwist it and then move I mean, it. it was yeah, literally yeah. like you would, you would kind of know to like when you put the screen down to like, Kind of just put a little pressure to yeah. the left when you like, little, <laughs> it pulls to the left, boys. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, from there um, we we both still had day jobs, and he eventually went and started working on another screen printing shop, which we we were still sort of affiliated with. I started working at a retail shop that they owned, but I picked up another business partner, and we really started pushing the custom side of things. Um, got out of the garage, got our first studio. And then we started doing a lot of live printing around town. And I think that's kind of like what put us in front of a lot of people and helped out. Um, I mean, we were doing it all the time. And people who didn't know what screen printing was, like we're getting to see it and um, it's free advertisement. You know, we do it at one business and then, you know, a few people from that event were like, oh, I could do this. We need some shirts printing. You guys do that for us or whatever. So. That helped out and then just kept pushing. And then he must've been busy. It seems the live events are just like, yeah, a lot. And they're always like nights or weekends. Or, Justin, you know. what's your worst war story from a live event? Like worst <laughs> catastrophe. <laughs> what did you forget? Um, I okay. For, 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 for reference on our last episode, rich from culture studios talked about having to fly a private jet to a show to bring shirts <laughs> there. So what do you got? <laughs> yeah. Um, How do you top that? Uh, I, well, just last week we did an event like an hour away from here. And uh, one of our guys forgot the ink and we had to, make a run for that. I think the worst one though was, cool. uh, we're Did they doing, ever run back to the shop or is there somebody uh, nearby? Well, we had somebody run it down there to them, but okay. I'm, I'm ashamed to say that's happened more than once. But the worst thing I think that's happened was we did some events. I think it was during South by Southwest and at some bar, there was some girl who intentionally just poured a glass of red wine all over the blank shirts that we were supposed to be printing. Oh my gosh. 
Um, were the shirts yeah. red at least or no? <laughs> no. It's all right. All white. So oh. that sucked. <laughs> Tie dye. <laughs> um, okay. So, so let's fast forward a little bit. Give us some, some scale to like your shop, like where you at now autos, like give us your flex, you know? Um, yeah, we're, we have three autos that we're running now. We're running them all out of one dryer though. Um, do you have a sprint, like a wide one or? Uh, no, we've got like a, it's, we're still working with the fast text and it's, I mean, it's only big enough for, <laughs> for two shirts to go down at a time, but we're, we're kind of finessing the workflow to where, I don't know, everything just kind of works out or we'll stagger. Like if one press is, you know, has to go around, you know, three times that buys us some time for. So you're, you're you know, square all, dancing around your auto. Okay. Or around your dryer. Got it. We're, max, we're maxed out for power right now, unless we bring in more. Um, we need to go to a gas dryer. Um, that I think that's our next big purchase is to go with a gas dryer so we can free up some power in this building. Interesting. I, you know what? You're not the first person in Texas that's talked about like, Hey, we're electric right now. We need to go gas. Is it just hard to get gas? I thought like you guys are on oil. Like we have, we, well, we didn't know until I think six months ago that there was even gas to the building. I don't even think the landlord knew. He just had the, um, we didn't have gas at our last place. which is why we got the, um, uh, that dryer. And plus that dryer was, I don't know, we've just been building onto that dryer forever. So, you know, I would like an auto reclaim and we'd like a couple more air conditioning units in here, but we had to bring in our own, um, like power source once we moved in and that was expensive enough. So I don't know, one thing at a time. <laughs> so, about, so go ahead, Bruce. Uh, what about like team size or revenue? Can you share that? Um, yeah, we've got, um, I think there's like 43 people on staff right now. Our production team is probably about 10 people. Our sales team is made up of about four people. We've got a couple artists. Retail side is about four people. Fulfillment team is probably the bulk of it, um, I would say. We've got a lot and that's of from the retail side then, huh? Retail. Or is that from... Well, it's from the retail sales, yeah, but we do a lot of, um, we do fulfillment for other clients as well. So um, we kind of put a lot of focus on that. What's your footprint look like? Like how, how much space are you guys on? This building is about 15,000 square feet. Yeah. We, our retail is about 2,500 square feet and the rest is production. You're obviously running a big business, right? Um, there's several million dollars there. You know, where do you, th when did, when do you think you like kind of transition from like, okay, this is a small thing that like I can, I can control every part of the business to like, oh shit, this is much bigger than me now. When, when do you think that point was Until in your career? Last, uh, last March when the ad started. <laughs> really? Um, mm. I mean, so is that ads when, that really turn it up? Yeah. I mean, we, we have everything, everything on our site is like continue selling when sold out. Um, it just went through the roof. We didn't know what to do. We like panic hired like 15 people at one time just to try and get orders out the door that we bought our third auto right after that just to be able to keep up because it was really hard balancing it's still hard balancing the retail side of things with the commercial work um the retail like we're trying to get it out the door same day sometimes like you know our fulfillment team will start you know letting us know what's out of stock i'll make work orders for that and we try and get it printed like within a day or two so it hits the customer like at least are, and, and are you screen printing everything or using transfers dtg everything, like everything screen printed yeah wait what what is the split of revenue between retail and the custom side because it seems very heavy retail especially with the ads it's spend now. very heavy retail i actually don't have i wish i don't have my numbers from last year yet for my account but i can tell you the retail side hit almost uh four million last year wow so so can i assume 80 percent is retail it's a pretty safe assumption, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, Bruce, we'll business call your one. We'll call your accountant <laughs> to get those numbers. <laughs> Bruce Come on, lived CPA. In a, it's almost July. <laughs> Bruce lived in a dorm for four years, so he's good with numbers. Um, <laughs> wow, that is true. That's crazy. So, so okay. So, if we're breaking that down a little bit more, and sorry, we're digging because I'm, I'm just super intrigued. I think the reason I'm intrigued is like our business is now split almost retail, you know, wholesale mm -hmm. and, and we run the brands of a lot of other clients, um, through like licensing deals. Mm -hmm. How do you know, like, were you measuring like, okay, I spent 40 grand on ads this month and it like, how scientific did you get with like your ROI? Cause like, that's a lot of money you're putting into that, like in and out machine, you know? Yeah. Um, and it gets a little bit more complicated too, because of the artists, like, 
there are close to like 80 contributing artists to our website. Mm. Um, and they're all from all around the country. They're most of them are friends or like affiliated with us or a friend of the shop somehow. Um, but there's so many people contributing. We do a pretty generous artist split with them to where uh, we're doing, <laughs> we're giving the artists 40% of every sale and we're covering the costs of everything, shirts, printing, all that. We're taking a chance on a lot of stuff because um, we're at least printing a small run of it to try it out. And yeah, we're cutting them 40%, but then where it gets complicated is splitting up um, all of the ad money spent. So I do a 50-50 split of the ad money. So as long as we're doing at least a two-time return, we're okay. And is that is that two times gross or two times like what's two times like? Okay, if you sell a shirt for thirty-five bucks, you know, are you for, putting yeah. for every for every ten bucks we're uh, putting in, we should be making twenty bucks, um, twenty bucks out of it. Speaking Granted, you're which, selling these shirts for thirty-five bucks. Like there yeah. is gravy yeah. in there, right? Yeah. I think we're 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 trying to figure out that balance because we're doing a lot of it with our athletes now. We're trying to do it on demand with DTF and stuff like that. But I think what's really interesting is like it sounds like out of COVID, you guys turned into this retail monster. Yeah, but well, like COVID was it was honestly we piggybacked off of uh, Brett and Printed Threads uh, whole model, and we did the same thing. We're printing for local businesses and hosting it from our site. Um, and that helped out, you know, and we still host a lot of other companies stuff. It may be a private collection on the site, but we still host it from our Shopify and not their own store. And so it's getting more people onto the site. We're getting residual sales from that. It helps with the retargeting. Um, if they need more printed merch, stuff like that. Justin, what you're talking about is like moat building. You're building yeah. a moat with your customers, with your data, with the amount of just, yeah. just things that are hitting your like hitting your business, you're able to then use those. Yeah. Um, and I think what's really cool is those are long lasting, meaning like when you host a store, you're getting all that data, mm -hmm. right? And now you can use that as your exactly. customers. Exactly. Um, I don't know if like print shops realize like data is a beautiful thing. And when people come into your door, you can use that to your advantage. Yeah, totally. um, how much do you guys spend on like email marketing? Is that a big part of what you do? Like Klaviyo? Uh, yeah, we're, we use Klaviyo. I think our, our list is uh, maybe close to 110,000, something like that. I need to be, I'm the only one doing it. I need to be a little bit more aggressive. I, I try and get three out a week, but I'm really hitting like one or two a week right now. But yeah, we'll test out different segments with that. I mean, it sounds like if the ad agency blew up that side, is there, are there agencies for the email marketing too? Or is that? There are, I don't know. I get really protective over like what it's <laughs> a said lot of this and stuff and just like, that's fair. Our, our message or like That's the our brand. voice and stuff like that. And I like a lot of it to just come from me. And I don't know. It, that, I know. That's another fun side of it too. Like I can delegate a lot of things, but a lot of this stuff that I find fun, I like to keep doing. Gotcha. I mean, you, you guys are a brand, like a, a more of a retail brand more than a screen printing shop for sure. Or at least have it's, transitioned it, over to it, that. I mean, it's coming to that. Yeah. The website, by the way, is beautiful. I Thank mean, this you. is one of the coolest design, like, you know, it really has the vibe. Is this the building as well? The, where it says feel so good on the outside. Yeah. Uh -huh. Super cool. Yeah. Chris, you have to pop up like a little scroll through this. And, and we're talking here. like, this is just a Shopify, right? Like skin mm -hmm. really nicely. And mm -hmm. yeah. Um, if you're not using Shopify shop should be using Shopify. It's yes, 2022. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And they rolled out all I like a ton of new features as well. They I'm just rolled out wholesale. Um, like in, yeah, you can actually that. make wholesale accounts. And the target um, audience is, did you see that thing? I'm still, yeah. I'm still working through, like I, I have the tab open in my browser. Now there's so much stuff to like sift through. I have, it's going to take me a week. Just like hit every little bullet point that they put out. Justin, have you ever thought about not doing your own fulfillment and sending it to like a three PL like uh, Shopify warehouses? If we didn't have the retail store, then I would, but it's just so convenient to literally just be able to refill the floor from, you know, 20 feet away. Um, yeah. Do you guys have like an inventory control system? Like how do you guys control invent? <laughs> it's Is it the gut? Uh, we're trying to dial that in now because we had everything. There's so many products. Yeah, I, I mean, well, I'm like scrolling yeah, and scrolling and scrolling. That scaled down, you know, 
uh, probably six months ago, we were, we had about 500 products in rotation. Now we've scaled it down to like 250, 260 right now that like we're mainly focusing on. We're trying to do a better job of like um, just revolving them out as new designs come up. Um, do, did you ever like me and Brett went down like the ship hero route and tried to like install that? Is it all like custom that you guys made? Like how much time do you spend on like the tech? We, we were talking about using ship hero. We've got, uh, one of our guys came from a fulfillment company and it's like, he's been trying to give me a sh- uh, to switch to ship hero. We for canceled the ours. Longest time. I heard you say, I wanted to, I almost hit you up about it. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. But, we're using, I mean, we're just using ShipStation right now. Um, we've been using it forever. Um, and we use a couple apps within Shopify to kind of just build pick lists. And um, we haven't started building in locations, but I don't know. Everything is kind of based on the artist in our, like, um, in our warehouse. And our uh, humble, guy. shameless plug, Printflow app. Uh, our engineer, Neil, built it. Uh <laughs> Integrates with Printavo. Get Printflow.com. No W. Printflow. Get Printflow. Get Printflow.com. <laughs> no W. Um, Trademarked. Wait, real quick on this. Um, just the last thing on the retail side, because I find this, I have seen and we have done other podcasts with shops that have made this transition. It is very cool to see. And I think it's also because the owner is maybe secretly or low key very passionate, probably about this space more than like the operational stuff of custom decorating and maybe True. feels yeah. that way to you too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, uh, for people that want to, to get into this or start balancing this, um, any type of advice, it sounds like maybe working with these artists is a good starting point. That's locally driven, things like that. Um, to be able to dabble in, maybe it's the events. What do you think? Uh, I mean, most shops have artists that, are already working there. Um, you're producing art for your clients. Why not produce some art for yourself? It's really, really simple. You probably already have a website. It's really simple just to add a web store onto that and just try some things out. Um, and you know, even working with local artists that you see, um, that you're printing their merch for, like, I don't know if you have an online store, a lot of it, a lot of the stuff we've seen come through, like, Hey, would you want to like host this on our site? And, I don't know. Anybody could do it. You could start out one person fulfilling online orders, you know, and kind of just build from there. But everybody kind of already, all the print shops kind of already have like the framework to, to be able to do it. We're all creative people. And I mean, you're use graphic source. If you don't have an in-house. Place. Justin, I think what's, what you're doing is you're decentralizing your sales, right? You're like, by, by taking these influencers, they already have a target audience. You're activating them. You're, you know, making art with them. You're either using their art, making stuff for them, empowering them to then make money. Yep. So, like, you're in the business of helping artists. One yep. thing you do just happens to be print shirts, right? Yeah, totally. And I think that's that's like at Campus Inc. Ours is, you know, college students, college athletes. There are, I think, the message that I'm hearing is there's so many untapped markets or untapped influencers that need ways to monetize and we have all the tools in our back pocket to do them. I think a lot of shops get scared of it and it's like, well, the risk is like, what if one pops off? You're going to figure it out, right? You're going to Jimmy rig it together. And I think even with a multi-million dollar shop like yourself, it's still going to be Jimmy rigged together. It's not going to be pretty. (laughs) Um, But I was learning this from our engineer, Neil, who Bruce knows very well. It's okay to do a bunch of manual processes. You, manual processes are okay. Like that tedious labor is okay. You can hire someone like Graphic Source or an admin to build Shopify's out and stuff mm-hmm. like that. There's no like red root, like, you know, just box you're going to buy that's going to do it for you. You have yeah. to hack your way through it. Yeah. Right. Um, what do you think your, okay, so like superpowers, like business owner superpowers. What is your superpower, Justin? Perseverance. Um, not, taking no for an answer, um, with pretty much anything. Um, do you have an example of that where you just like kept hammering it forward until it worked? Uh, I don't know. I'm fighting with landlords and everything <laughs> else, but just want to do whatever it is we want to do. If I put my mind to it, like it's going to happen one way or another. Um, so like, I don't know get, how we get landed. the hell out of the way I'm coming yeah, through. Much. I mean, whether that's shows during, 
uh, South by Southwest when you're supposed to have permits and things like that. Like we just, and you know, even some of the stuff that we saw on the side, like allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know that. And then I don't know, just pushing through everything. I'm still like, I try not to micromanage, um, but I'm still am involved with like every department and like, I'll let things run for like a few weeks, but I'll step back in and look for efficiencies and things like that. That's like my biggest thing now is just like trying to find small ways that we can like step up in the shop and try not to be too hands on all the time, but like I'll just come in and uh, I'll spend maybe up to like a week in a, uh, in a department whenever I have the time and try and tweak things and help out there. Has there been a win there recently? A lot of stuff in our fulfillment department, um, new processes there um, I've been able to help out with and production i try but those guys they're doing it way better than i could have ever done it like what about on the fulfillment side like i remember um we did interview with eric at night owl and he was saying they used to use just boxes that weren't cut out in the side and nothing was organized on shelves we so then they out. bought the boxes with the cutouts put it all That's in organized it i was listening we stole uh, we stole eric's design too <laughs> i need to get those boxes because we we assembly lined a few weeks ago um we got about 75 percent of the way through all of our stuff uh boxing all that folding boxing and everything and it's helped speed up like our pick time for all of our products a lot. Bruce, awesome. what's your superpower you know it's funny i was gonna say the same thing as justin actually like uh i i i just get overly obsessed with stuff and so i just keep pushing it forward um but i think that that has been my kryptonite in a way as well for scaling to stage two of growth because it doesn't matter how much i put in anymore it's like it's like what we talked about in the last episode. It's like the rah rah of the of the getting the team fired up and like them owning it and pushing stuff forward. Because it's like, especially at forty plus, you know, like we're at thirty. Um, I think the owner has a multiplier effect for sure. Like it could be you know three x or something, but it's still not compared to what if the group is fired up and pointing in the same direction can do. So, the pro and the con, I guess. I don't know. What would you say is yours, fair? Raising money would be yours, I think, right now. Um, I need a little <laughs> yeah. bit more of that superpower right now. <laughs> Any check writers? Um, no, uh, I, I think like I call it like spin selling, like trying to take a situation and like m- you know, like blowing it, like you know, looking at the valleys, not the peaks, and and figuring out where we can crush it during like a, a low time or getting creative about something. I don't know. Um, I think. Uh, like I'm wildly optimistic and maybe a little too optimistic about sales. <laughs> um, and, uh, I think that's like my superpowers. I don't, I don't let like the sales dumps get me down. Um, but I, I think to Bruce's point, like now I can't be this, like, I'm going to do it all superhero. It just does. It just does not When you actually look like an idiot when you try to do it. Right. They're like, there's no way he's just like, stop. Do it. Just, like, just, just stop, just stop. Like <laughs> Steven's at it again. Just stop. Right. Like, uh, you know, and now it's like, actually how to, how to like ground yourself more and be a source of stability. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I, I try and like any new processes in the shop. I try to like take those on for the most part. I try and take them on myself and try and perfect them as much as I can before I pass them off to somebody else. That's where I kind of get bogged down sometimes is like taking on new things and eats up a lot of my time before I can like pass it off to somebody else. But I can't expect a, as else. a maturing as a maturing business owner, right? You're kind recovering of the, as a maturing business <laughs> over. What, what do you do to like learn every day? Like, are you, you know, spending a lot of time with coaches? Are you reading a bunch of articles? Like, you know, I know, honestly, I'm putting out fires most of the time. Um, okay. Listening to uh, you guys, listening to the uh, like church show, that stuff has been super helpful. Um, paying attention to the forums has been helpful. I try and like chime in when I can too. Um, the forums makes me feel better about things in our shop. You know, everybody else has like the same. <laughs> it's okay. Sort of it not be okay. <laughs> um, but I don't know. Just staying on top of um, like as far as the the print side, like our team is on top of 
our ops managers on top of learn, learning about new products and stuff like that. To me, I've, I've been way more focused on just like the marketing side of it, still trying to grow it, overhauling the site, like trying to do the things that I'm best at and just like focusing on that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to make it, trying to make my job as most fun as I possibly can while still dealing with like the monotonous stuff that I have to. So. Justin, do you guys have like middle management built out? Like are there point people for every part of the business now? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a lead for, um, for every department. Um, and like our ops manager takes care of all the, everything at the shop, pretty much, um, fixing press anything that's broken. He's fixing and calling vendors to come and handle whatever. Yeah, I think I think that transition from stage one to stage two, it, it's like going from like screen printer to business owner is is or or like uh, coder to business owner or or whatever it is in your business from um, is probably the hardest but most important skill to learn that just takes a bunch of time um, yeah. and, and like coaching or I don't know, maybe it is therapy yeah, it, of like, I mean, it, you're like addicted to it. It's literally an addiction just to just like keep trying to push it forward. Yeah. And it, it, you know, that's like my strong suit has never been managing people. Every other job I've had, like I've been in some management position, but I don't know, way better with like managing product than I am with people. Mm. Uh, I'm, I have great relationships with, pe with people, but like when it comes to, um, when, when it comes to disciplinary stuff or things like that, not great at it. Uh, the coaching side of it, uh, I'm okay at, but other people are way better than that at me. And I try and just have hmm. them do it because I'm not, I'm not the greatest. I'd rather be managing the product or other backend type stuff. But um, luckily, we have some some good leads and good HR person, and everything just kind of works out. So um, switching gears here a little bit. Uh, how do you think about budgeting and financial ability? I feel like that's one thing that we all come short on as the business grows as well. Uh, especially you've got such a heavy retail side now too. You know, maybe there's projections, how much we're making and stocking and, uh, you know, that's money sitting on shelves too. Like what, how do you look at, is there somebody that helps you or? <laughs> <laughs> you do all the finances yourself. Yeah. Um, so how do you do that? Like, what is it like for, for the budgeting and what to spend for the next X amount of time? And then also the kind of projections to align it with all that. Uh, I mean, so we know to be for it to make sense for the shop. Like there is a certain amount of shirts of like one thing that we have to be, that we have to be moving every month uh, in order to keep it to keep it going or else, you know, we're spending time reburning screens and things like that. Um, so I think just making sure that we're only focusing, you know, it's almost like the 80, 20 rule, except it's more like the, more like the 50, 50 rule right now for us, but focusing on like focusing on top sellers. Um, um, but obviously the commercial screen printing side of it is still like lucrative, as long as things are moving on the site, like it still makes sense. We know that we're making money doing it. We're, we're, we're not doing gangbusters by any means. Like we're, we're getting by, everybody's getting paid. Um, I would like to see the shop, you know, be able to make some more money, buy some more equipment and things like that. But I don't know, as long as I was, it's a cool feeling to be able to put money in a lot of these artists pockets. Some of these people have like, they don't even, don't even have jobs anymore. Like they're just like relying on, their payout from shirt sales every month. But as long as we are paying the bills and we're able to do what we want, we're able to like host these events and bring in some bigger bands and things like that. And the bank account has money in it, then we've been good to go. Um, yeah. We want to explore profit first and do things like that. Um, it's just another, like another time consuming thing that I would really like to like have my accountant jump in and help out with but it, we need to make it more of a priority. I do have like uh, a member on staff that like is really adamant about like getting into it and trying it out. So it's probably something that's going to happen here in the next like six months or so. Do, do you look at like uh, profit every month? Do you look at cash flow? Like how do you determine, you know, like for us, 
it's you know it's a much different game that we're playing right now like we have to burn some cash we have to you know i'm looking at how much cash is in the bank how much we owe payroll is going to be insane next week you know what are you looking at like what keeps you what lets you sleep at night uh it's nothing um (laughs) (laughs) melatonin (laughs) (laughs) it's mostly yeah mostly just cash flow i can like i have a pretty good sense of like i know that we're doing this on the Shopify store this day, then this is going to be able to float until this area. Um, and we've got payouts on this day and then payrolls coming up on Monday. Um, and, and then if, you know, if we get a little short or behind on whatever, then we'll do something creative and drum up something. Or, you know, there are those like tough times where I give the sales team, like, okay, who owes this money right now? Like we've got rent coming up and this, whatever, like, Let's start going back to old invoices and filter through from top of them, find, find new ways loads. to get money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think like as your business grows, right? Like I think profit first is fantastic. And if you're a smaller business, there's, there's great, you know, but as you start to get bigger, these cash flow cycles are crazy, right? Like, you know, but you, you get stuck. I mean, you know, we're still, we just now started moving to like a hundred percent payment upfront to, a lot of new customers, a lot of our old customers who've been with us for years. We still do the 50 50, but there are some orders that like um, uh, could be, I don't know, $30,000 and we're just getting like half up front. But then a lot of it is for maybe things that um, I don't know, you guys getting like Richardson hats right now are impossible to find. And we're sourcing, sourcing them through like a spot that's sourcing them through somewhere else and like. I don't know. So, and then we're still outsourcing a lot of our embroidery as well. So there's a lot, we're covering the cost for a lot of this stuff. And then a lot of those people will be on net 30 or net 45. So we're not seeing that return for quite a bit of time. So I, I was talking to like a finance person um, and, and they were saying like the first thing, you know, something we're going to be doing um, as we grow is like hiring a director of finance, which I can't wait for. Uh, but they're like, the first thing they do is Here, they go in and they just what? pick up this trash bag. Yeah. Like, Here this you is go. yours. <laughs> uh, but they're like, they extend, you know, they're like, we look at all of our terms and we try to figure out, you know, how do we get the longest terms possible? And then how do we collect money as quickly as possible? And that, that cycle, there's like this time between it. I forget what it's called, but you actually, if you can, if you can create that cycle, you can actually have extra cash to then use for the business during like that small period of time. There's a name for that. I don't know, Bruce. You gotta um, Google that. That's a good name, yeah. I bet. Um, but it's it definitely like the swings get a lot bigger the bigger you get, you know, and they get yeah. scarier too. Um, and like you know, the bank accounts are swinging left and right and up and down. Do you ever feel like you guys have to use like a line of credit or anything like that? Uh, yeah, we rely on uh, PayPal. The PayPal um, business capital has helped us out a hmm. lot. Um, How does that work? So. We switched over. We were using Stripe for the longest time through Printavo. Um, and then we switched to PayPal for the longest time. And we had so many transactions coming through. Um, and they would always offer those lines of credit. Um, I don't know. Once they saw so many transactions coming through, they'd offer us a line of credit. First, it started out super small. Um, and you pay a flat fee. Um, but then it's we kept moving more invoices through Printavo, um, you know, these like $30,000 invoices through PayPal. Um, then they started offering more for the line of credit and the flat fee would be like, I remember one time there was like a hundred thousand um, dollar offer and the flat fee was like 2,500 bucks. And that's better than any interest rate you're going to get on from anywhere, I think. So, but you're, you know, you're choosing to pay back, you know, 25 to 30% of your sales um, for every transaction that comes through. So we use it sparingly now um, and we turned it off with Printavo. We're just using Stripe uh, again with Printavo and just using um, uh, the PayPal through our Shopify store to kind of pay back those those loans. But that's how we made like all of our big equipment purchases um, after we bought our first two autos. Everything else that we bought uh, has been through one of those instead of going through the lending companies, which I didn't realize how much we were actually paying through 
a lot of those companies until I would see like the difference in the payoff and how much is still owed. So okay, can I talk about something awkward? Yeah. Uh, how do you pay yourself? Like, do you ever do you pay yourself last first? Like, you're the owner of the business, and I've heard so many different ways. Like, as your business is growing, I don't pay myself or I turn my payroll off. I think this is super interesting, and I bet you a lot of people will be interested. Like, how do you make sure you're good? I'm just an hourly employee. I okay. clock in and out and uh, the same as everybody else. But do you, do you, so like my goal was to say over time, I'd like to get be at 10% of revenue like that. That would be dream case. Um, you know, you work on the business for 10 years, you put in all this time, like part of what you want the reward to be is more financial freedom. And now I could never get there because it, it was always wanting to reinvest back and reinvest back and reinvest back. And like, I found that self-discipline to not be achievable because it was like, Oh, but I could see the next step. I know where we have to go, you know? Um, obviously very anti-profit first there, but w was there a thought of that or, you know, or of how, how you look at it? Uh, like for me personally or for the mm -hmm. business? Yeah. For you. Um, no, I've got this weird guilt, um, about, that I don't know why I feel like, and I'm not even the highest paid employee in this place either. Um, there's so many people that can do these jobs better than I can do them. And if I didn't have them here, then this place probably wouldn't be doing, may not exist or wouldn't be doing as well as it would. Um, so I don't know. I, yeah, I built it and I handle the stress of it every day, but I just have this weird guilt about making any more money than like the team that's supporting this whole thing. So I don't know. I'm stay pretty in line with like the rest of our staff. Um, so then do you look at like distributions at the end of the year or like when there's extra money to be like that, or you just no, keep it all in the business? I, it, I would rather like take more chances on doing stupid stuff, like throwing big shows. Like we're doing a car raffle right now. We bought a 1977 Lincoln Versailles that we're raffling off. And we will spend, you know, five grand on that guy to or Lincoln uh, Versailles. I need to look this up. Um, I'd rather just do stupid stuff like that. And but but you do make sure you get paid and you have like, yeah. you know, you're you're doing fine and all that stuff. Um I, I think it's really important that like shop owners just make sure, like, hey, you know, make sure you're getting paid. You know, this is your job, right? Like yeah. uh, I hear I mean, about it. The, uh Mike McCallowitz and Profit First. Uh, in our at Print House was conf, he asked the audience. He said, "Okay, in your shop, who is the number one employee?" Um, and people would, you know, oh, uh, you know, Carlos or uh, Julie or you know, whatever. And he's like, "No, you guys are all wrong. It's you, the owner. You are the most important." And so, if you had a number one employee that you thought was Julie, you'd probably be paying them the most. But are you paying yourself the most? And everybody's like, just crickets, right? <laughs> you know, because it is, it is, it's awkward. I mean, it's it's weird, and you're right, but like you said, Justin, it, it feels strange. I, I don't know. It kind of goes back to the budgeting thing, and it, it's something interesting. I don't know. It's Do a, you know, like it's weird seeing like I don't know when you see like the boss pull up in a brand like in, in a brand new G wagon or something like that, and like I don't know. There's just a weird disparity there that I don't know. Just it's strange. And i never really wanted that. I actually, I, when I had my last raise, like I still had like our top team members, they gave me my evaluation and they're the ones that gave me my raise. So. Hmm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> What's, uh, wrapping it all up. What do you, th what do you think is next for feel so good? AKA fine Southern gentleman LLC. Um, yeah. So we we're actually talking about that yesterday. There's always, it seems like we're always working towards something um, for us. I, right now, we're trying to grow the actual local retail side, throwing more events there. We're packing out our calendar. Um, I think I'm going to take a cue from Justin Lawrence and take a stab at the subscription service um, and try and get that going. I'm about halfway set up and hopefully have it done by the end of the week. Um, and probably for me personally, just delegating out a few more tasks to get off my plate and be able to just kind of float around a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I don't know, possibly another retail location somewhere else, wow. something like that. We'll see. 
Um, we got to get to Austin, Bruce. Yeah, I already, <laughs> you know, I already added you to my my Austin list when I'm back. We've got some family out there, so <laughs> yeah, this is I, awesome. I, I wouldn't mind trying out another retail uh, location soon. Um, and we're also like uh, with like the record shop that we have here too. We've got a record label going on, um, so that's that's the next thing that we're trying to push out as well as like helping more local artists trying to get out there. You're dabbling. You should meet total side note, but, um, hello screen printing, uh, okay. out of Phoenix, Arizona, very similar to you there are or hello merch. I'm sorry. Um, I'll connect you guys. They basically are super into music. He has a studio upstairs. There's fulfillment. Got in the screen. Fulfillment printing, looks like it's size. an airplane hangar. Fulfillment. <laughs> yeah. There's a shop tour. You can search for it. <clears throat> and one of the recent ones, but, um, started in fulfillment that got on that side. So it doesn't do retail necessarily, but, um, cool. Well, thanks so much for joining. This is Justin Weems. You guys can follow him at F S G print on Instagram or hit up J E E M S jeans on Instagram too. Feels so good. Check out their website, check out their store, grab some stuff. Appreciate joining us. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. We'll see you guys in the next episode.